doing that. that Super. Okay? I'll, I'll... John Paul, welcome. Why don't you introduce yourself? Now that your microphone's on, right. I think it's your first time on TTT, but uh, welcome. Right. Glad thank to you, have thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, yes, I'm John Paul Taylor, uh, director of Real Life Poets Incorporated. Uh, <clears throat> and we started uh, doing this. We was It was uh, three of us as the founders, uh, me, Leroy Hicks, and uh, David Hawthorne, who, who's deceased now. Um, but we, as being performing poets across, you know, traveling, doing open mics and stuff, called traveling poet. Um, we well, are. John Paul, when, when are you talking? When did this all start? Um, I was roughly maybe eight years ago. Okay. Eight, um, eight, nine years ago. And um, we, all, we had kids. And so we were trying to figure out a better way to use our gift, but be better men, uh, be fa better family men. Uh, with that being said, uh, we started doing our activities that were centered more around the youth, more around activities that our own children could participate in. Um, and that grew into, um, we actually started doing uh uh, poetry says in one of the neighborhoods here in, in Birmingham in the East Lake area uh, at the time was uh, a very uh, heavily uh, uh, crime ridden area you would say uh, and we would do open mics but charge in canned goods and clothing items for people to come in and then once a month we would have a uh, feeding and they would, could people could actually come and get the clothes and things like that uh, just from you know from from the show so what we decided to do was you know actually become official get the proper paperwork and whatnot uh, with m my background being secondary education um, that was one of our goals was to actually be able to go into the schools uh, and into the the areas that like the library, those institutions, and be able to do the spoken word, uh, but from our standpoint, uh, and that has been able to take place with with a lot of the the, the kids. Uh, we formed the library, the partnership that we have with the li Birmingham Public Library, uh, for three years ago. John, can, uh -huh. can 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 I ask you some details around what you just said there, which was really interesting to me. You were you were in secondary education. That means you were a teacher. Well, I or, I studied secondary education in uh, in college at UAB, and I'm a, actually certified. I'm a certified teaching artist now mm -hmm. for uh, Alabama now. Not Alabama, what I think. But going into the classroom as a high school teacher, I didn't do, but because I was a poet, and mm -hmm. so I wanted that freedom. Uh, and I actually wound up doing something else, which is funny because I didn't like the the stranglehold of the class. So, I, but I went into corporate America, which really taught me the lesson that I that I needed the that I needed my freedom uh, in using the art, you know, in doing the arts, and that's what kind of drove this. All uh, real life poet board members. Um, uh, Al Elliott, he's uh, actually a PhD candidate in education right now. Uh, we have a couple of professors and uh, several of the individuals that, that are on the board or staff members. We somehow involved in education. We just we're all artists also. And of course, working with these young people, working with Beth, uh, I've been actually we've been working together back and forth maybe the past three years or so uh, and with the same goal giving our young people an opportunity to use their voice my favorite phrase is your voice is your power very cool yeah so I'm interested in that turn though that your organization your organization uh, grassroots kind of on your own organization wanted to work with an institutions like schools and libraries what uh -huh. was the motivation thought behind that well because being here you know, where we are um, the south being in Birmingham Alabama the arts is the backbone it is always something extra uh, it is always uh, the it's never the main show is always the backdrop um, I, I, my whole thought process behind doing something like the library, getting um, 
uh, the schools and stuff in it. it they're, they're true institutions, and if I can go in and show that they work inside of here, um, it, it's, it's kind of like we know it works, but I have to come inside of here to show you that it works. Uh, mm -hmm to harness because unfortunately the support I need doesn't come the people who I serve can't support the need so the people who um, the people who I have to get to support this are inside of those institutions so I have to be inside those institutions to actually show them that this works and that's what's been taking place um, Fortunately, because of the power of the children, the children had spoken up. Um, we actually started doing workshops with the library. We was only they asked me to do three workshops uh, for one of their slam competitions uh, a few years ago. And because of the children said, "Hey, we want to keep doing this," they actually saw the power of the art in real life. And you know, we've really gained a lot of support. Um, you know, or we're gaining more support. Then, like I said, and because we do everything that we do, uh, we are street poets on, on, on a level. But everything we do is by the national standards or by the Alabama course of study. So, you know, we have it covered kind of on both ends. So it's kind of like you can't deny me. You know, because <laughs> I do it my way, but I also follow your rule. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm glad I asked the details. That's that's really profound. Some of the things you're saying, there. that's great. I can, and we can go back into more stories about the organization and so forth. But could you kind of speed us up and tell us what you all are doing this summer? Sure. This summer, um, we actually I, I apply. Uh, I actually work with a couple of people, uh, Walter Jenny, uh from Tampa, um, with the whole Brave New War. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and that's the that's the HBO series that we see on that has the, the young uh teen international uh teen poetry competition. And uh we wanted to be involved in that, get inside of that and do it. Um I applied uh for it and we were actually accepted. And the beautiful part about the whole thing is it's not based on the talent of the children is, is based, they let you in based on the level of your program. And so it was wonderful to us that in Al they, you know, kind of, okay, we can be recognized on the national level with, with the level of our programming, not just the level of the talent of the children. Uh, but with that being said, we have six young people that we will be taking to Chicago to actually compete in the Brave New Voices International Team Poetry Competition. And we will act be the actual first Alabama team um, to actually compete. Uh, so that's a wonderful thing for us, and especially with it being the 50-year anniversary of the Civil Rights Movement. For us, it's kind of like 50 years later, our young people get to go back and talk to the world again. No matter what the Supreme Court says, go for it. That's right. right, right. <laughs> and, and yeah. right. These are the issues that we'll be talking about. Mm. Do you do you want to introduce the young folks who are here? Yes, of, of oh, course. Uh, uh, we have uh, Justin Wright, who is the president uh, of the team. Uh, also, Chase is right there beside Justin. Well, there they go. Here, y'all just come over here. They'll come back. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then there's uh, Ebony Wallace, who is the vice president. Uh, and then there's Miss Alicat, who is one of the SLAM coaches. And, of course, you know Beth, who's the, uh, the other coach. Uh, and, and, and we're all working as a unit, as, as a very proud uh, a group of individuals. Uh, you all, you all kind of share just uh, Okay, so... This is plan plan F for us now. Um, <laughs> I love your persistence. Go for it, Beth. Yeah, yeah. We have we're, that. Okay. We're start. asking Justin to speak up again, I think, there, though. Hi, Justin. Do you want to introduce yourself? Introduce yourself. Oh, uh, I'm Justin Wright. I'm the president of our SLAM team. Uh, all right, well, the SLAM team is going to Brave New Voices. Our team name is No Disclaimer. Can you hear us without the mic? Uh, we can, yeah. yeah. Just speak up and speak close, and you'll be good. Speak when up you're, and when you're talking. Close. Yeah, to the. I just want to check. Can anybody hear me now? We can. Yes. Hey, this is great. Hey. 
Cool. Hi, Al. We can't see you, but we can hear you, and that's that's no, that's fine. One at a time. All right, wanna... Al. We were introducing some of the young people here. Uh, why don't we go and uh, meet Ebony again? Ebony, introduce yourself if you, uh, if you would. Hi, I'm Ebony. I'm the vice president of um, our Slam Team. No disclaimer. Oh, bud. Me. So much louder. <laughs> you gotta... Hey, I'm we heard Ebony. I'm not a member of the cabinet position, whatever, so, yeah. But you do poetry, Chase? I didn't used to. Not until this. <laughs> and we recruited Chase. We recruited Chase as, as the team, and I have to give Allie Cat credit. She... Chase was actually part of the original team, and this is the beautiful part of the story because Chase wasn't part of the original team. Um, well, because of his dedication, him watching and actually helping the other poets, Ellie Cat was like, he needs to be on this team, not because of his level of poetry, but because of his level of passion. And that was such a profound thing um, in, in the whole process. So. So, can somebody explain to me what a team is, and uh, what, what, how, you, how often you practice, and what do you, how do you go about your work, okay. especially here in the summertime? Oh, uh, um, yeah, we would all define a team as like being a close family, somebody who like trust me. We all don't get along a hundred percent of the time, but you know, people who are honest with each other and love each other and. They're not afraid to tell each other how they feel and stuff. And as far as practices go, we practice three times a week. We have mandatory practices three times a week. We'll meet Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday night from 5 to 8. But we practice pretty much every day out the week because it's um, – poetry is like a – it's not like a part-time thing. So we practice quite often. Um, is it Miss O? Is it Miss Obey? I, I'm not sure your first name there. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us tell us what a coach does? Just sit around. My name is Shania um, A. Obey. I'm poetically known as Alley Cat. I, I was trying to figure out how Alicat started with this C, but okay, yeah. go ahead. Um, well, I'm a national poet. I travel around and I do poetry. I enter national competitions. Um, and I also coach. Um, this is my first time actually working um, so closely with the youth group. Um, all of the national teams I've been with, we've all are 21 and over. But um, it's exciting to work with them. It's, it's better than working with the adults. they just full of energy, full of, you know, innocence still, you know, so they can speak to you more raw and and it, it, it's, it's been a great experience in working with them. I've worked with many teams and worked in different states. And, and but they're like, they're, I, I believe they're going to, even though I've been doing poetry for a little while now, I, I love this group. And this is my greatest gift to poetry is to work with these kids. So sorry, sorry to be so thick, but I just need the basics broken down. How many weeks are you guys working together? before you get to the competition and when is the competition up in Chicago? The competition is in August. We have been working together. It's going on two months now, about eight weeks so far. I have been um, with the team. Wow. So we put in a lot of time. I should say, yeah. <laughs> and, and the goal is after this is over, like I say, is for the continuous of. So, like, we're behind the curve. A lot of the teams who are already involved, they've been practicing since last year, since the last competition. And mm -hmm. so, for us, it's like, this is new. And so, after this competition, we'll be preparing for next year. So, everything that's happening now is new and fresh and brand new um, and exciting. And it's, it's been, a, been a very great learning experience for, for everyone in it. Uh, like I say, the competition is August the 7th through, through the 11th. Uh, we, we're having several things uh, before then needed, you know, uh, to get support from, you know, from the citizens uh, with the team in, uh, in, in doing this.
Mm -hmm. Al, welcome. Hey. Do you want to throw in your two cents? How's this been for you, and what have you been? Well, I am, uh, I am what you call the definition of extra. Uh, I'm I'm not like a, uh, an official coach, but uh, I, I think I, I just uh, I'm a rapper uh, by entertainment trade, and I've actually performed as a poet in a lot of uh, areas. And so just kind of sitting down, just adding. Uh, things like Alley Cat, Bell, and John Paul. We just all just kind of chime in together and kind of give our expertise, whether it's something about stage presence, it can be something about actually talking on the microphone in front of audiences or people, uh, ideas about what to write about, or what stories to tell. Uh, after, because all of the kids, uh, I'm proud of them kids, all of the young adults on our team, well, they, they're all like just but seasoned writers. So a lot of times it's not what they have to say. So we just may add a little bit like, hey, maybe you can kind of give it a little bit more emotion. Or well, sometimes a little bit less emotion. Um, or just uh, uh, just give them all the opportunity to give their own about what they're talking about um, and the stories that they're telling. So my part is just, uh, there's a documentary that's also that we're trying to create, the web that we're creating that's uh, kind of chronicling the process. And sometimes I may snap pictures. Uh, we also have like a videographer, he, he's not on tonight, uh, they come in and get in video footage, just trying to just help tell the story and chronicle history. Uh, I'm just like uh, a cheerleader, coach, uh, sometimes I bring uh, cookies. So, could I, could I switch fast and hear, hear some, some stories, stories. And maybe some poems from the kids, from the young people here? Kids. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Justin Chase Ebony? Who would like to tell Is there a coach? Us? I feel great about that. Spit Me Ebony. Too, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was supposed to say. I'm sorry. Spit poet. <laughs> like we're really about to spit. Right. Yeah, Go ahead, Ebony. Awesome. Go ahead. There's no one in here. Um, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> I know you like okay, um, no disclaimer. Yeah, no disclaimer. I'll, I'll spit part of um, a piece I did for Word Up. That cool? Everyone? Yes. Pick apart my culture the way you picked apart my DNA to satisfy your own stereotypical needs. Segregated my mind just so my thoughts could be as one-sided as yours. So you scream to the Savior. You call your God. Not knowing how much hypocrisy and slander you sung best. But I hear the oh-so-sweet blasphemy from your interior motives. Drenching my pride in the tear coating of unalienable rights. Critically analyzing your black and white perspectives to achieve some kind of sick and twisted justification for your unruling actions. As my hunger for humanity grows, my generation rises with our hands held out to collect the debt of an unpaid society. Still, they proudly possess the man-made monuments to hang upon another prejudiced pedestal. So here is your equality. Given to you to hang upon your flagpole the way you did my ancestors from your perfectly planted trees. Spit up. Spit up. Snaps up. There, snaps up. Okay. There is a there is a there is a clap track. I think we could put on here, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Justin Spit Poet. So so what happened? How does a coach or or the audience respond when you're when you're practicing? When somebody does that. Well, does if you're Alley Cat and myself, um, it's very hard for us to stay in our seats. We get violent, like the better the poets, the poems are. I'm like, I'm going to flip you out of your chair if the poem right. gets any better than that. Um, but I mean, it's a lot of like vocal respect. That's one really cool thing about Slam. Like, um, you don't, it's not a quiet thing. So, like, the best way to show someone respect that their work is beautiful is to get like into it with them. So, moving your body and saying, Spit Poet is kind of our thing, and that's kind of like, a, a thing in the slam world anyways um, but anything like a lot of you know like man that line was beautiful but that's just that's right so get into it is my answer to that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so I've been I've been sort of uh, leading this and I want you guys to take over what do you want to talk about what do you want to tell us about here <laughs> what do you want to talk about Somebody else want to read or do a poem? I can't say spit. I'm sorry. I'll try it by the end. I'll try. <laughs> let me let me ask the poets like like what was one of the I 
think is the biggest surprises about being involved in this whole process so far? You said one of the biggest surprises about being involved in this process? So far. It's not all. I could say, I could definitely practice. say that when I heard poetry, when I was just taking just that two poetry practice for the first time, I was like, this is going to be kind of lame. It's just going to be really smooth and soft. I had no idea it was going to be yelling, you know, sometimes using <laughs> profanities and just this insane <laughs> spirit poet. So, I didn't know what to expect. So when I first heard Ebony, Ebony was the first person I heard that do a piece, and I was just blown away. So, uh, me too. Uh, and, and the it, most surprising thing. <laughs> there's been a lot of surprises. That's what I'm trying to say. There's been quite a few surprises. I guess it's um learning how to work with the team because. I've been doing poetry for since my freshman year. I'm an upcoming senior, but I've never had to work with anyone else. I've never had to feed off the vibe of someone else. I've never had to rely so much on someone else because I'm the youngest. I've never learned how to share. So to come into a group and have to vibe off of everyone else, you're relying on someone else, so you have to trust them. So that was that was a big surprise. I thought it was just going to be you do your thing, okay, Justin, you do your thing, I'll do my thing the way I've been doing, but it's so different when you get into, it's a completely different when you get into a group. Can you break down some of those words for me a little bit? Uh, you said you, you haven't had to share before, but you've been sharing ever since kindergarten, haven't you? What do you really mean by share when you say that? In your art. In your art. I think, I think, I, will, I just want to quickly say, I think what she means by that is in her artistry, so, like, she's been slamming since ninth grade and been writing since ninth grade, and it's been, like, a, really a one-on-one -on -one thing. We have a couple other poets. Ebony's one of my students. Um, but she's really got this one-on-one -on -one thing going with her artistry. So, and I think Justin is an artist like that. And in Chase's own respect, as his official artistry, first form of art, they're all very, like, individualized in that. Mainly because I think John Paul, and this is why I think this is also so huge, um, what real life poets is doing in Birmingham exists in other cities on huge scales, but John Paul is like attempting to create this, and everybody that works with him, Al, Kat, Al, everyone, is trying to create this huge movement for the art. So there's not like, if you go to Philadelphia, there's teen slams every single week. John Paul in this group are the first people that are doing this in Birmingham. Um, and you hear someone like Ebony's voice, and you're like, man, how has this not been happening? And that's like the persistency of this group um, to make this happen in this city, and then also to go. To Chicago and tell this city story. I'm, I know I'm telling two things at once, but their their work is so individualized because they are islands in their schools. There's not a lot of there wasn't a slam team at Tarrant until I got there, and Ebony didn't know she was a slam poet, and I was until I was like, "Hi, here's the thing about school, though. <laughs> like, you're a writer. Like, that's what you need to be doing." Um, and I mean, I think they can speak on that as well. So it's just it's all so new, um, but the art is so good. So. Right. I think my biggest surprise about the whole team in general is the fact of how quickly we became a family. Like, because to work with each other, you know, that's just something, that's a normal thing. You know, you can work with somebody and they'd be your coworker, but that's not how our relationship is. When we have to get up there on the stage and do our poems and like we have, like if we have a group poem or something like that, you can't do a poem like that or you can't do a piece like that and not have a connection with the person you're doing it to because that is going to show to the audience. So the how quickly we became a family was is astounding to me because we like clicked immediately and from that our poems are like or our group poems and our personal poems are just coming and coming and keep going because of that connection we have with each other. Show us what you mean, Justin. Do one. Spit poet. Spit poet. Spit poet. I remember all the trees my neighborhood used to have when the maples and the oaks didn't give sway to the gentle breeze, when you could see the silence, when you could hear the cultivation of quiet, when the sweet iced tea didn't leave such a bit of taste on my tongue. I remember how I slept through the freight train of the world's anguish. It was soundless, soothing. 
I remember how I cried when they told me how only the sun setting distracted me from destruction, the most beautiful thing in that moment's existence. I moved over that day, repeating the process of interrogation over and over and over again. Every poem is a teardrop of repetition, a repeated sequence of whys and question marks, a ridiculous rendition of master plans and motives. It's an effect, and it's caused by means and reasons. You can grapple in the shallow end of a kiddie pool, diluted and polluted with shit. Every poem is the paradox and it's wrapped in oxymorons sprinkled with hypocrisies and smothered in contradictions it is a lie of a lie of the truth of a promise it is the sound of falling the smell of the jump and the taste of the crash through the fault lines of the earth every poem is the apocalypse of friction it is the finishing that finally vocalizes the framework of finality that salvation cannot be fished for in the seas of others that when everything goes to boom You'll have to stand there and use the songs from the dusty road and you watch and you wait as everything you love burns to the ground. And you stand there trying to mend the sentences of your broken heart, but you remember that every poem is an end. Every poem is a 12-year-old boy and every poem is that milestone of movement, a reminder not to move on from, but over his end. Every poem is the paradox of remembrance. I remember how I could cry when it left and how I could beg for it to come home, how I could only love thunder and rain, but now I can only respect it. Spit poet. <laughs> Spit poet. Nice, thanks a lot, <laughs> Justin. Yeah. So let me check with, with the uh, poets and the coaches here. You, you've heard that before, and but are there differences that Justin did this time? and? Like, how does something develop? <laughs> That's all you, Alley Cat. <laughs> oh, um, well, with Justin, um, Justin has a, his development is, is, it's actually blossoming so great now. I've heard the poem before, and with Justin, sometimes he, he you got to stay on the coaching because it'll sound like a totally different poem. He'll put a different emotion in there, and he can switch the poem up. What do you mean you have to stay on the coaching? Um, once, okay, if you have a certain emotion or something set in you, um, he may be thinking of more of a pleading. So then the whole poem may come out in pleading. You may have a joyous emotion. So the whole poem, even though a poem may be a sad poem, it can sound joyous which will wow. throw the whole poem off. So coaching is very important when you, you want to really care for the words and nurture the different words and the different phrases and make sure it's expressed the way because he knows how each poet know how they want it expressed to them. But as a coach, you have to take your experience and realize how the audience and the judges will receive it. It's like having your own drum going off on your in your head, but you want everyone else to hear your music and your drum the way you picture it. And that's where you need that coach to do that go in between for you. I was wondering if the students uh, wanted to throw in there on coaching and in in and I'll ask it this way that like where does your inspiration come from? Does it come from your heart? Did it come from your peers, come from the coaching, you know, um, or everywhere? How does the coaching fit? Um, for me, I, I mean, I'm completely new to this, so I take anything and everything to heart. I'm still learning little details, and re really, I'm learning everything about this. So what I do is I just write until I can't write anymore, and I have them kind of coach me when we're doing our personal uh, meetings and then I come, I perform them for the real coaches and they really try to just near perfection. So. How does hey, it Go ahead. Go ahead, Alec. Go ahead. Oh, um, I wanted to have Ebony's and Justin's perspective on the coaching also. Hmm. Uh, for me, the coaching is, um, it, it shocked me, actually. It really, honestly, shocked me because 
Although Miss Sanders was like the person who actually got me into slam poetry and was like like the youth voice, I never really had to write more, more than one poem at the same time. I never had to go so hard. I never had to tell my own story. And it was pretty much the coaches who are coaching me now, including Alec at Miss Sanders, they're the ones that's like, you know what, really, your poems are good, but you, if you told your story, it could be so much greater. Like, the poem that I just spit for you was somebody else's story. It was like a group of people. It was some beautiful words. And I'm, I can say this about my piece because I know what it is. It's just beautiful words put together to create something that sounds good to your ears. It's not truth. It's, I mean, it, it is truth, but it's not my truth. So my emotion isn't 100% connected to it. So to have Alley Cat being like literally Alley Cat bringing out her claws saying, if you don't go hard, I'm finna maul you to death. Like, that's, that's hardcore to have someone who cares about us that much to want us to go that hard. And it's hard for people to be honest with you nowadays. And I appreciate so much that all over my honesty with me because I just wrote like two group poems in the midst of a weekend and they're both like winning poems. And I never knew I could do that until they said, hey, Ev, you know, step up your game, you know? And for me, as far as the coaching, like, how it works, well, how we're being coached works for me because, one, I do, I have that, you know, issue sometimes with, like, putting different emotions as far as poems and not saying it how I want to say it because how I came into the team is, I come as a writer because that's what I did first. I wasn't like other people birthed into slam poetry first. I was writing. So when you write, you're not necessarily saying it to everybody else. You're letting them read and letting them take their own emotions out of it. But with slam poetry, you have to say it the way you want them to take it, the way it's, you know, supposed to be taken in your yeah. opinion. And you have Sorry. to, you know, give that because if you don't, they're going to take it a completely different way from what you're saying. And for me, the coaching helps because it helps hone in how I want to say this or how I want the audience to, you know, get this and to understand what I'm saying rather than if I'm being joyous, I want them to know I'm being joyous. And if I'm supposed to be pleading in the little parts that I need to be pleading, not in every part of my poem, then I do that. <laughs> What's up? Early cat. You know. <laughs> I love oh. them. Go away. I, I see you. I see you. Go. We don't all have to plead all this. I got it. We got. We all got it. We got it. Disclaimer. No, no disclaimers. What was that? What was that all about? What What are you guys laughing about? Well, yeah. because, because of, uh, Stephanie, for Alex hates the wine. She hates. She hates the pleading. So. so Part of it, you know, uh, watching, watching the kids, kids kind of train, train, train them on, on that. that but <coughs> honestly, being able, able, able to keep that up, but, but elevate when is needed, when is not. And that, that is a skill to, 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 to uh, train somebody to be able to do that. You know, and so watching that process and watching them not only take her direction. Uh, but her being able to notice it and see it and not entertain it, but cut it off and, hey, no, we need to move in this direction, you know what I'm saying, with it. So, uh, th and, but that's why we laugh because. Because uh, I'm not afraid to hurt their feelings. Right. And, and I am. Like, I'm all like this bleeding heart. Like, I'm just yeah. like, tell your story, you guys. It's going to be okay. And then Alley Cat <laughs> and I come together and it's like. Man, okay, all right, okay, but like maybe calm down a little bit. But then it's like that you, as a teacher, I think, and Al can probably attest to this a little bit. You're constantly like worried about like what everyone else is like thinking, and we were already pushing the limits with Ebony at the level she was. So then to hear her have this beautiful reflection on where she was at the end of junior year versus where she is now through these relationships with other people, and I've stepped out completely. I'm supporting from the outside at this point. Um, and I laugh because I love Justin's plea. And I would never have told Justin to not plea through a three-minute poem because it's beautiful to me. But as an artist, he is so much stronger. And I can still come in and be like, yo, but Justin, like, plea a little bit more. But Alley Cat can tell them, you know, and there's this respect level, like, when they're speaking on family, like, that they've created this respect level with each other in such an amount of time and that 
man, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's it's what real learning is. This is what real learning looks like. It's not there are no books, there are no tests. Life is the test and your whole being is what you're taking the test with and that's what they're providing for them and it's the it's seriously the most powerful thing to be a part of and to get to chime into, you know, a couple days a week. I can't even it's amazing. Yeah. Watching 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 them um the the adversity uh, because it, it would be easy if all they had to do was come in and just do slam practice. Uh, but because of the, like I say, this is a new experience for us all. Uh, there's been a lot of trial and error. And I can honestly say Justin and, and Ebony and Chase, because Chase brought Justin the first time. So th those three individuals have been there since day one. We've had a lot of changes. Uh from personnel within the SLAM team, you know, individuals coming and going, uh, them having to learn new people, uh, you know, and, and get adjusted, uh, them having to learn us as the coaches. Uh, and they've all taken it very, very well um, and and used it in a positive thing. And, for, and I have to say this because the articulation of our children, because this is one of the biggest points for me when we go, uh, we have an understanding of where we're from, right? Being from Birmingham, Alabama, and I get a lot of calls from, I have gotten several calls from several SLAM teams from across the nation, and people have a certain um, expectation of what they think they're going to hear from us, you know, because this is Alabama's first time, and so we're from Alabama, and so they think they, they know. And I, it has been a beautiful experience with these group of young people to be so articulate, so uh, 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 so w awesome of writers that uh, we had that Southern style, but but we come from a very very intellectual, you know, you know uh, uh, in Indians. And so, so it, to me, and they they, they understand. understand. What we're going to do, the message that they're bringing, you know, to, to this whole situation, and they're taking it very, very serious. And so, for, for me, I don't know if I've told them, like, for me, because, like I said, Ali can't come do a lot of the coaching. I do, I have a lot of background, the paperwork, and talking to the other team. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm saying to the other team, like, we're coming, and y'all have no clue. On, you know, but we're getting a lot of respect, but a lot of respect from different levels. You know what I'm saying? Um, because we have everything, you know. Um, and when I'm, the goal is when we leave, uh, they will have a better understanding of how powerful the art is everywhere. Like we, we're here and we're in the group just like everyone else, you know. So, I, I, I have I lots have of questions, questions but, but I, I want to ask, ask students, students if they, they want to do, do more, more for us. For us. <laughs> students? Is it you guys the youth there. Yeah, 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 that would be y'all guys. <laughs> it does, it does. Maybe I just want to... See, this is where the coaching the comes call. in. There this is go. where the, <laughs> right. Chase, Justin, will y'all two move to the side? Um, <laughs> Ebony, I need you to give uh, your true self. Close your eyes and spit poet. Spit I mean, there is never like this She says that I'm sophisticated enough. She says they went the unrighteous and the wicked. Tell Ellen. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. She's yeah. echoing to herself. So if everybody mutes, I, I don't think people will be echoing. Yep, I got it. I, we found, I saw where it was. Go ahead, start again. I apologize. She just could hear herself, so it was like... I know. I think it's good now, though.
Mommy dearest never liked the sight of wired hangers. She says they aren't sophisticated enough. She says they were meant for the unrighteous and the wicked. But I can see you crushing under the weight you have bared on my shoulders. I see your bones breaking, body aching from years of leaning on others. They say that every daughter will share a piece of her mother's characteristics. But the piece we once shared has been tainted and broken into crumbs. But I have no problem starving. My stomach will stay as hollow as your presence. My mind will be as fucked up as my bed sheets. My peace died the same night my innocence was taken. And you don't know what it's like to have wooden doors creep open in the middle of the night to be taken out of your slumber just to live through another nightmare. You have no idea that my bedroom has become a playground for marauders that are bold enough to remain without a mask. And still to this day, you want me to stay silent when every night I slowly wither away into my own safe place. After being touched, teased, tortured, poked, and prodded. Stop telling me to be quiet. You want my words to remain as absent as the apologies I never received. Sweet child, I'm sorry I wasn't there to secure you. Baby sister, I'm sorry that I had to limit you to nothing more than irrelevant jail bait. Ebony, I am sorry that my virtue does not play a part in your reflection. I am so sorry that you had to watch me break, crumble, shatter, and fall. And not once did you pick me up, dust me off, and ask me if I was okay. Mommy... You blatantly decapitated my mocking first. I don't sing anymore. Conforming my lullabies into wordless anthems that I pray won't reach the ears of my unborn child. I dread the day I have to tell my daughter the reason she can't spend the night at grandma's. The times I have to make up tales of mythical creatures and princesses because mommy's bedtime stories are blank pages ripped out to create a cover up for lies. I just hope to God she doesn't get tired of me trying to protect her from becoming another generation of damaged goods. I want her to know that she will always be safe in my arms and I never want her to resent me. But most of all, I never want her to have to explain that giving birth to someone does not give you the right to abort their existence. Uh, I gotta say, this medium doesn't allow for proper response. <laughs> thanks, Bowie. Yeah, thanks so much, <laughs> Ebony. Thank you. I keep. Um, can I? If you want to go somewhere else, fine. But here's here's what I keep hearing. I keep hearing, um, like finding balances between different things, like between street and institution, between telling your story and telling stories, um, you know, the, the story, whatever. Right. Can, can you break, is that what SLAM is in some way? Can you, can you, does that make sense to kind of describe what the extremes are that you're playing with? Like, there's also personal writing and then this group stage performance, you know? Right. Is that a the, yeah. the main thing um, with slam poetry, well, like first of all, we have to establish the difference between poetry and spoken word. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to spoken word, that's when you get into the competition of the of the event, pretty much. Um, the the slam poetry, which which isn't necessarily mean you're taking the best poems. You're taking um, things that you want to relate, maybe more shocking or more um, energetic or something that appeals to whatever area or whatever subject you're going to uh, venture into. 
but the only um, difference between the actual poetry and spoken word would be the competition to me, would be slam. To me, slam poetry is definitely spoken word. Um, and the whole competition, I'm really... I, but, I mean, does, it, does the competition matter? It's not like sports competition, right? I mean, or is it? Students could speak to that too. Like, uh, do you want to? Do, do you want to win or? What's, yes. What's, yes. What comes in second? Right. Yeah, they don't I think that. what it is. I know a lot of people are like, "Well, well competition doesn't matter. You know, it's all about the poetry." Yeah, mm -hmm. it it is. It's about the poetry. But I believe the competition comes when. Let's say if Justin and I had the same story, who's going to relay that story to you to make you feel the way we felt? Right. We want, I want you to feel the way I felt. He, he can tell the story, but I can tell you the story and make you feel the way I felt to make you feel like you were me during that situation. So that's how the competition comes in. And you're like, okay, you know what? There are a million girls in this world who have been raped, but if I can tell the story and have everyone be in that be in that area where I was when I was a child, mm. that 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 Because she told the truth. Yeah, because I told the truth, and she didn't sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. That's why the competition matters, and it drives them. Yeah. Right. It's not like a corporate competition. It's like an artist competition. Mm -hmm. And the competition, I think, is within themselves more than anything. Right. How, and I think that's what this group has had the ability to do. Um, I was... I was giving like love support and artistry support. Now it's like it's like pulling out her best self from her. And it watch my hand now, you know. Um, so man, it's just been the most powerful thing. I think that's what she means because mm -hmm. it's her whole heart. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, Chase, do you have anything to share? Or, yeah, or Justin, do you have one more? I think Chase has a piece that he's dying to share. All right. Good. I'm glad I asked him. Chase, go for it. Uh, uh, yeah. How about it? No disclaimer, but I'm going to give a disclaimer. <laughs> that's why we're no, that's why our team no disclaimer. My piece is part of a either unfinished personal piece or the first part of a group piece. We're not sure just yet. Because I'm going to delete that disclaimer, but go for it. No disclaimer. Wake up, white America. Rules and regulations turn into laws, but can't turn the minds of the superior whites. Statistics and test scores use as excuses for your biased evidence, saying we deserve better, that we are better. But sometimes minorities tell more truth than majorities. Mm. The whites that live in the ghettos and the blacks that live in the mansions. Although they may be few, they tell the tale of a modern world. One where race is inferior to individuality. Yet you still raise your children telling them little white girls don't kiss little black boys. And mulatto isn't a color, it's barely a human being. <laughs> but you're not racist, right? Not until it becomes a problem. Newsflash, there are no levels of racism. See, you pretend not to mind sharing the same bus as a black woman, but imagination ceases when you have to share the same seat. <laughs> and while you're sneering at the single black mother, you forget that 47% of white marriages fail. See, you love pointing out the black dads who knock up and run out, yet you forget about your uncle who can't come within 100 feet of the playground. And you enjoy living behind the media mirage that portrays white as nothing but pure. There is nothing sacred about the secrets of the real white demeanor. TV ads with rich, happy, loving two parent families, but reality paints a portrait of drunken, abusive fathers, Xanax addicted mothers, and anorexic daughters starving for the attention from a father who would rather give it to his mistress. And just as white women brush on beauty with blush and eyeshadow, shadowing bruises, the white family covers their criminalities with Christianity. Because you love living Christ like, as long as you're asking, what would white Jesus do? Speak for it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Awesomeness. <laughs> really? Um, who knows? The last allocate. So I want to. I want to 
you you are still raising money for um, the trip to Chicago. Do you want to make a pitch for that, and where can people contribute? Sure. Uh, we are definitely still trying to raise money uh, for the trip to Chicago. Um, there are several ways in doing that. Uh, one, you can go to uh, Birmingham Public Library uh, website, which is uh, BirminghamPublicLibrary.org, uh, and library wish list. Um, is there and it'll be on the website or you can go to reallifepoets.org uh, and we have a link on the website where you can donate uh, either on our website or it will take you to the uh, library website to donate also. Uh, we would be doing several shows um, along the way for, for, you know, for everyone to be able to uh, participate and call in to also um, uh, uh, all the time um, in this, so I'm, I'm trying to think of other stuff, other ways. Uh, uh, yeah, real life poets, uh, library wish list dot com is the uh, library website. And just to say, if like some people listen to this as a podcast later, and if you're on your bike somewhere, um, if you just go um, and Google real life poets. A lot of those sites come up um, yeah. right right on the front page of Google. Okay. Yeah. So not not hard to find that way. Um, and we'll put links in um, our show notes and so forth as okay. well. Cool. How close are you to what you want to raise? And uh, we're we're we secured um, maybe about thirty percent of what we really need to raise um, for the total of. Out for the trip and also to continue the program to you know to be able to keep doing going on into uh, next year. So, so uh, the whole team, the whole is, team about is about six, six young, young people, people. Is that right? Six young people. Yes, six young people. Uh, uh, that's on the team. And like I said, we we're, we're doing it for this trip, but in in aspects of uh, you know going back and doing this again next year and expanding the program so we can participate they can participate with us all year you know in, in this so could I ask you to reflect on that because I've been thinking that um, in a bigger way kind of um, that the um, this is an amazing experience for these three young people and the other three on the team mm -hmm. but there are a lot of young people out there who ought to be touched by this right so mm -hmm. How does that happen? <laughs> you, so how do you like? How do you reach out to more people, more kids? Um, Maybe how does it get back into the schools, perhaps? Or I don't know. I just, well, I think one of the things, if I can kind of yeah. jump in, I know that we're we're filming a documentary uh -huh. uh, that'll kind of help to distribute the process and kind of better explain what it is, and then also just like by word of mouth. I mean, like a lot of these kids. They, they have access to the same internet, same Twitter, Facebook, and they just spread about their experiences about what they're doing. And I think with, with, with something like that, I, I think you want, I guess, what I categorize as genuine growth, like as opposed to just making it the hottest thing to do the summer 2013 or this is what we did, the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights you know, Act or whatever. It's, it's one of those things where kids, they have, we used to rehearse or we used to practice at Railroad Park on Wednesdays. Uh, and it just a lot of people would just come up, just just art people of the community that just wanted to just wanted to help out. Uh, we, we've had people that have heard of our story and they may be hosting a, a musical event. And I said, well, we want to donate part of the portion of the show for my event to what you've got going on. And that's just been kind of a, a word of mouth uh, and, and kind of spread just person to person. And I think that's like for for the size of the organization that real life is, I think that's a healthy way to grow uh, right now. Um, we're not the only game in town as far as there being poetry and youth, but I think right now we're the loudest wheel on the wagon, so to speak. So it's a, it's a lot of attention coming towards real life, especially with the invitation to go up to uh, Chicago and uh, participate. So uh, I just think if, if, if we just keep doing kind of like what we're doing, the, the growth that we've seen over the past six, seven years has has gotten us here. So um, I think just you know, steady drip of water, basically. Mm -hmm. Can I ask the the youths here? Um, 
I, I'm always, and, and I know we're over time. You just give five more minutes here if we can. Just, to, I, I'm always interested in taking something as powerful as this that's happening outside of school, and at least thinking about how how can that come back into school. I mean, beyond having slam groups in school, that's one thing. But have you thought about that at all, the young people here? <laughs> Like, Our, how is your experience different in school, and is there any way that could come back into school for, for kids? Well, like, as far as us, you know, doing the, on the slam team and, you know, participating and speaking our poems and everything like that, the whole point about us being on the team and doing these poems is that we're, one, helping find our true selves, and two, we're showing our true selves and learning how to, one, relate that to other people like we have on the team and also relate that to ourselves because with each poem that each new poem that we create we're finding a new version of ourselves or I know in my in my case that's pretty much how it is like each poem that I'm doing I'm finding something new that I didn't really know about myself but and that everybody else is now knowing so taking that back to school is like say if I just graduated so if I just came from high school and now me going on to college that's a completely different person because now I'm more comfortable with who I am mm -hmm. myself now than I was, you know, two months ago. Just because, you know, being on this team and speaking this poetry and learning how to tell my story in the way that I want it to be told. Let me ask Ebony, how would how would Miss Sanders' class be different if she did more more uh, spoken word? <laughs> Is she still there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of teasing her here, too, but... <laughs> so. Um... More spoken word. I mean, honestly, because she already does so much in the classroom and she's so very intellectual when it comes to teaching, it probably wouldn't change too much because everything that you say that she, what if she did more of, she's already doing more of it. Yeah. Okay. Like she's already doing it. Great everything answer. that you probably think of that could happen in a, I don't know, in the best class at a college conversation thing or whatever, that's what happens in her class. And it blew my mind freshman year because I'm like, I'm just a lame freshman. I don't want to talk about deep stuff. I just want to pass your class <laughs> and go on to the next level. But, I mean, like, everything that people are talking about should be happening in class. Like, no, we should be more hands-on with kids. We should. Do she's already doing it. Like, she's already 2020. So everyone else got to catch up. So one of the tough questions, though, and given what you performed for us tonight, I is like, can you tell your truth in school? I think it's a tough, you know. And that, and that <laughs> yeah, that that is a part of the the, the plight and and fight, right? Because you know, being in school is a very uh, you know, mechanical at times, very mechanical. Because even in you telling the truth, right, you have to be very uh, mindful of the environment uh, mm -hmm. that you're in. And with us, the way we do teach our young people is to be honest. And so uh, I've actually had kind of those instances where they wanted to say honestly what these young people said, but they couldn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I think also too, uh, if I could chime in, I know like our our Thursday practice is actually an open practice, so people can come in, participate, listen, and take part. And and even if you can't be as honest as you can be, you know, I guess at a slam practice at a school, just providing, uh, I guess, those opportunities, those outlets. So even if they can't do it in school, they know where they can go, or you know, a, a they know that other options exist to be able to express themselves and not just necessarily confined to, you know, the classroom. Well, there's so much more we could learn from y'all. And uh, thank you for hanging out for this over an hour here now. I really appreciate it. want to give us all a break. Um, the, uh, and so we're, we're going to keep track of you. We, whenever you uh, get that video or parts of it produced, let us know and, um, I have a, a program going on at uh, Lehman College in the Bronx with, with young people, and it'd be interesting to kind of share some of what they're doing with you and you with us again sometime, even even this, this next month. So I'll, we'll, we'll be in touch somehow. Uh, let's stay, let's, let's connect. Um, 
do want to say that uh, we've been uh, broadcasting here over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network, and we're here every Wednesday night at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time, and um, and uh, that uh, is something that was started several years ago by uh, Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier, and Jeff Lebo got EdTech Talk back up just in time for the show tonight, um, so that's the kind of things he does to, to make all this happen, um, and that's at edtechtalk.com. Uh, slash TTT is where the show exists, um, and gets broadcast from. It's also at teacherstechingteachers.org, and uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, within a half an hour, it'll be up there. Um, so look around and find us, and uh, come back every Wednesday that you'd like to. Thank you so much, um, Ebony, Justin, and um, <laughs> and Chase. Sorry. <laughs> and thank you, John, and, um, and Al, and uh, Alicat, and um, Beth, and and Monica as well. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again soon. All right. Thank Good you, night. Paul. That's awesome. Good night. Thank you.